uh, I'd like to start this video by saying there will be noise and there will probably be issues in this video. We are in a Mercury retrograde. I have done this video 10 times. This is the 11th time. Uh, time number 10. I got 45 minutes into it and my screen recorder crashed and my file was corrupted. I could not save it. It's very, very aggravating. Uh, quick announcement right off the top. Patreon and I are not going to come to an agreement. Uh, I can't meet the requirements they need and after doing my homework and realizing um, they pretty much lost about 30% of their worth in the last year and they're starting to implement a lot of the same um, platform issues that YouTube are having. Same new rules. So just moving from one headache to another. So the past few days I've spent my time and I'm building my own website. Uh, it's the only other option I have to preserve this material and to be able to post what I want without being filtered. So we're going that route. Be patient with me. This is a Mercury retrograde and that makes it twice as hard. And the sun is in Gemini, which is just amplifying this retrograde. Uh, and it will continue to amplify until the sun is past Mercury. And then Mercury is going to turn around and catch back up. All right. Uh, when I think Mercury, Gemini, of course, Mercury, Commerce, Twin Towers, uh, which all that coming down has to do with the summer solstice. As I told you uh, just a few years ago that we had our first summer solstice that it was in Taurus and it's there for three years and then leap year pushes it out a year uh, so I know other astrologers are telling you it happened in Gemini but again I'm using the middle pillar in alchemy Western tradition and Eastern tradition are the other two pillars uh, sidereal is very very close to alchemy that's why I suggest it but alchemy goes by the names of the stars not necessarily 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. We try to stay at that. It's very close. But the power shift happens. You can tell by the names of the stars which constellation they belong to. You just got to know the language. The Greek and the Aramaic. Both ancient tongues. Not what we speak today. All right. Um, Saturn Jupiter conjunction why is it so important uh, it's normally not as important it is this year it's important because it's a generational marker that happens every uh, 20 years uh, it was the first thing I really picked up on because of the Catholic iconography in previous attempts on this video, I've tried to switch my screencast over to Google to show you some images. And doing that is where it kept shutting down on me. So I'm not going to do that now. You're just going to have to use your imaginations and do some of your own homework or refer to older videos. Uh, when you hold two fingers up, the index finger and uh, the uh, middle finger together, that's a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in palmistry. I was studying Catholic iconography and after reading uh, palmistry by St. Saint, Saint Germain. It's a huge book. And I started noticing they were speaking in hand signs in the symbolism, in the iconography. And it went all the way back to Byzantine times. And it would change. Uh, but that Saturn-Jupiter conjunction was always there. You know, you can't look at a picture of Jesus and think it's the Jesus that you think in the Bible. Because I'm here to tell you, I can't say this enough. The Bible was written by the elite, for the elite. We could not read. And we've never been taught to read. Not in alchemy. We're taught to read in language. So... Once I learned to read it and realized, oh, this is not for the people. 
if the people knew you know not who you worship, that's for sure. So, what's going on right now? This Saturn-Jupiter conjunction has been watched for thousands of years. Uh, we didn't have clocks. The sky was the clock. The sun was the clock. The moon is the clock. Depending on your legend, your culture, your traditions. The stars have always mattered. It's the only thing that does matter to them. Because there's a time and place for everything under the sun. And they would like to steal it all. Nonetheless, a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction simply marks a generation. It happens almost every 20 years. And depending upon the constellation, that tells you what the next 20 years is going to be about. Uh, now, this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction is different than any I have been able to uncover. Uh, it's quite unique in thousands of years. Uh, what comes before it, what it, what it is, what comes after it, like it being uh, preceded by a, a winter solstice with a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction that's preceded by a summer solstice that has a, a solar eclipse. Uh, when has that happened? I mean, incredible. Uh, basically right opposite each other. It's, it's quite incredible, that alone. Uh, but to, for it to happen in Capricorn, which is Saturn's house, uh, during this, the, the whole thing, it's a, you can see it happening. Look, this is what's going on. All of this is a battle of ideology. Sagittarius rules uh, psychology, ideology, philosophy, all of that. And that's the battle. It's, this is the battle for the mind. Uh, this is the fire in the mind. Mutable fire in the mind. Sagittarius. Uh, but Capricorn is cardinal earth. It's not mutable. It's stable. This is the god of let there be. It's feminine. It's a creative force of earth. And it, it rules government. This is supposed to govern the mind. Not this mutable transmutation. So we're going to switch ideologies. We're going to get a new government. I've been saying this since before 2010. In 2012, I said, nothing's going to happen. It's nothing. We got a tsunami that knocked us off one degree, which is 72 years. Everything sped up. Everything sped up. Uh, they lost some time. They've got to make up time. That tsunami, uh, they've played it in their favor. And I believe that's why they're pushing the agenda forward a little faster. They're playing their cards regardless. Um, cancel culture, right here. Purifying the mind. Uranus rules the conscience mind. And we have a, a, a priesthood out there, a cult, that's canceling everybody. They're, they're even retrograding into your past and digging up crap to cancel you with. And they're very finger pointy. Uh, they're very pious, arrogant. Uh, they have no mercy and grace. They're totally ruled by their emotions, Mars. They're very warlike. And that's what's going on here. Uh, Mars, the emotions right now, are very unstable. Cancel culture is very unstable. You think it's bad now? Wait till Mars gets in Uranus. And you're going to see cancel culture light up. It's coming. Venus fixing to move into the Ion, Ion, Oculus Boreas, of the Ion Sof. Sof, Ion. Reverse it. Ion Sof. And if you are into Judaism or Babylonian Judaism, then you'll know what that means. So, again, Gemini... Twin Towers, Commerce, uh, came down as the sun is, the summer solstice is now in Taurus. No longer in Gemini. Uh, Gemini is the unicorn. Gemini is Sirius. Gemini is the two dogs, the two twins, the unicorn. And the lynx. Uh, 
Moon in Leo today, the house of fire, moving into Virgo. Uh, Neptune still in Aquarius, hanging in there. Won't be there for very much longer. Pluto over here in this mess, waiting in Capricorn for Saturn and Jupiter to come meet, moving very slowly. And they're all going to line up together on a Saturn-Jupiter conjunction on a winter solstice opposite a summer solstice with an eclipse caught right between two eclipses in the United States, the, the main house of government on this planet. So I've been telling you for a decade now that we're getting a new government. But to get a new one, the old one must come down. You can't go out and buy a new couch, bring it in your house, and set it on top of the old one. It don't work. You got to take the old one out first. Then you can bring the new one in, or go shopping for one. Well, they have one planned for us. Just like cancel culture over here. I've been telling you, Uranus here, it's time to purify your mind. Your consciousness. Stop watching pornography. Stop watching fear porn in the news. Start, start putting good food in your mind. You need food for the soul and food for the mind. Food for the heart. Stop feeding the body. Stop feeding the desires. The uh, self-discipline. Because if you don't do this, it will be done for you. And when Uranus gets ready to leave, uh, everybody's going to be canceled that didn't do their homework there. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Had to pause. Trying to get it turned back on here. Uh, been away for a while. I had to walk away. So I forget where I was at, but I do know what I want to talk about. I talk about where everybody's at on what cross. Right now we have a lot on the mutable cross. But we also have serious things going on in fire. Uh, but we have the sun, Mercury, Mars on the mutable cross. Jupiter on the mutable cross. Pluto on the mutable cross in fire. So we have this subconscious is now connected with Jupiter. They're both going to meet with Saturn and Capricorn. Saturn's going to back up into Sagittarius as well. We have the moon in fire. So we've got the moon who rules water in fire. We've got Uranus in fire. And we've got Jupiter, Pluto in fire right now. And Earth, we have Saturn in his own house of Earth, and Venus in her own house of Earth. And the moon's fixing to move into Virgo just tomorrow. Let's click on it and see when. Four o'clock in the morning, Central Standard Time. which will also not only be in Earth, but on the mutable cross. When, like in sidereal or Vedic astrology, they talk about squares, that is the same thing as the cross. There are three squares. There are three crosses. Um, then you talk about the trines. Those are the elements. There are four. There are four trines. There are three squares and Four, pyra uh, four pyramids. Think about what I just said to you. In astrology, you have three squares and four pyramids. You have an earth, water, air, and fire pyramid. I've shown you the symbolism of that. And then you have the three crosses. Fixed mutable cardinal. I've shown you the symbols for that. You need to know those. You need to memorize them. You need to... Do like you did in elementary school, 
when you're learning your multiplication tables or you're learning to write, you have to put it on paper, paint it in a picture, do something to learn those symbols, to embed them in your knowledge base so that you just automatically, when you look at something, you see what it is. You, you, you can look at a thing and know, is it earth, water, air, or fire? Uh, especially all of the brands have logos. A brand is a logo, is a symbol, is an image. And they're all the images of the heavens. So you can know exactly who you're dealing with. Once you learn the, sim uh, the symbols, then you need to learn the attributes or characteristics of the constellations in the planets. And what all that means to us and how it affects us and it is a lot to learn but it is worth it uh, we should have started with this in elementary school they kind of start us with this in kindergarten when you get the blocks and the symbols you're not really into in preschool they're not really shoving the alphabet on you yet it's all about the symbolism and that's really where you need to start. That's why I call it kindergarten or preschool. You, uh, you're, you're, you're still at the adept stage. You're at the mutable stage. You're at the learning stage. Uh, when you move to the master stage, you're out of school and you begin applying your knowledge. Uh, you, you have a craft, a skill, and you begin working same way in life our lives work like this based on Saturn returns and then you become the Grand Master um, you've, you've, you've done your thing in life now you you do what you've always aspired to do you you complete your purpose um, it's a wonderful thing to watch and then you you now give back and you at that cardinal stage you give back uh, what you've learned. You give back. You. That's why a master always has an apprentice. But the grand master, he's still teaching the masters and the apprentices. He doesn't have anybody over him. Like Yoda. You become a Yoda. And those are the, your three crosses. And we all come in with our planets all over the place, right? They're on different crosses and different elements. They're on different pillars and on different paths. Kabbalah and Freemasonry. Which, uh, Freemasonry is the teaching of Taurus. Uh, Kabbalah is, is a fire magic. It comes from uh, Aries. Cardinal fire. We've talked about this so much about how this fire here either purifies you or it destroys you. It burns you to the ground. Then you have to become a phoenix out of the ashes. You have to completely reinvent yourself. Now, when Uranus and Pluto, who are both in fire, when they get ready to leave these signs, and Pluto's fixing to do it, and Uranus will in just a few years, at 2024, but when they get ready to leave a sign and Pluto leaves by the winter solstice uh, and hands the uh, baton off to Pluto in Virgo to manifest the next 20 years. Not uh, right now all the <clears throat> those born with Pluto and Libra are the cancel cu culture because their conscience mind is over here in fire opposite Libra and they're the purifying priesthood they're the Babylonian priesthood laying down the law right now do you see this they're purifying the conscience mind and they're going retroactive and they're just going to keep canceling well when Uranus gets ready to leave here because they've purified everybody but themselves they will get burnt to the ground destroyed it will be epic uh, the pendulum always swings the other way every generation blames the one before um, and 
All of this is about ideology, fire, the fire in the mind, the big boy on the block, Jupiter. It's He has everything to lose. And remember, this is his age, but it's the end of his age. And Peter chose to be crucified upside down. That was his choice. Nobody made him do that. Think about what I just said. But right now, today, the sun is in Gemini. And everything has its duality. And Gemini, Gemini really is about duality. It's the teaching that it's one of the lessons of Gemini is duality. And to become, uh, you have to make the outer like the inner. They have to be the same. And when, what that really means hermetically is you meet, when, if you are born female on the outside, then your higher consciousness is male and vice versa. You have to meet your other self. Uh, you integrate. You. Uh, you. It's it's a spiritual thing. Air. Air. Spiritual thing. Not a physical thing. Physical is opposite of... Uh, that's Jupiter's business. The physical world. But air. Every, every word. Spirit. Ghost. All of these belong uh, to the air signs. Our languages can be broken down, and each word actually belongs somewhere on the wheel. Everything is on the wheel. Either below it, our unicorns, our fantasies. You can keep going deeper down into the abyss, or you can rise above it. Lynx. This is the lynx, by the way. Uh, they're trying to cancel Lodge 49. Two epic seasons, and they want to cancel the links. I'm hoping another network will pick it up. I think it was a big mistake for AMC to do that. It was the only thing on television worth watching. And I hope they let go of them if they're at, at, at least release the rest to us on them. Uh, uh, they're pretty tight about you can't even use pictures. I can't even use pictures thumbnails in my of them they get they get pretty hostile about it uh, and we know why and it's probably the same reason it's not getting a third season but it's not completely dead yet okay so pluto and uranus both in fire and they're alike now over here this is about philosophy and ideology and pluto requires you to do your homework here and that means when he, you got to put off the old and put on the new. It's it's in its subconscious. It's a new subconscious pattern. It's something we do generationally, instinctively. We grow as we age, and so Pluto is requiring this, and it's in fire. So when he leaves, and does the little winter solstice thing with Saturn and Jupiter. It's payoff time. If you haven't, begin to look at everything in a new way. Remember, you get to choose. But if you don't choose, it will be done for you. And, and so, every time they leave a sign, the destruction they leave behind can be epic. And it is by element. Live by the sword, you die by the sword. So here, it's fire, so the destruction will come by fire, same with Uranus. And then, the destruction will both be earth. And then, the destruction will both be air. You, um, I want you to see this wheel for more than what we think of as the word astrology. When you think astrology, you think prognostication, the fates are destiny. That's what we generally think of. You're going to go to an astrologer to find out if you're compatible with this person or uh, what's going on in your life or when you're going to die. To me, that's the hocus pocus part of it. And if you really get to know the circle, you can actually see those things. But you need a relationship with this circle. Um, uh, 
it's like the teachings of Christ. Uh, you, you're not, you're supposed to have a relationship with God. Uh, he's there to bring you to that. And it's a knowledge base. It's a knowledge base. And I really like this, this, wor this word God. Especially the way we use it and its root in our language really is good, good, uh, or goud, but because there's a difference. The word we got nine times out of ten, it translates to uh, just the ruler in power, the highest authority for that age. Whatever rises in the spring equinox. East is the throne, the seat of power, and they're good. But when they hit the other side, then they become bad or dark. It's duality. And in the twilight, uh, you meld those dualities, the twilight zone, where realities mix, like the Mandela effect. Uh, you know, all of these timelines... Are playing out right now. We're like in the middle of the circle. We're in the middle of the circle. And it spins around us. Uh, it's a really strange thing. But what it is. To me. It's nature. It's nature talking to us. Telling us. I'm earth. I'm water. I'm air. I'm fire. I'm fixed. I'm mutable. I'm cardinal. I am all things. I am one. I am many. And it's us. This is us. And we project down here. And what projects here, what we are, is where our stars are when we're born. That's what we are. Uh, my, uh, my heart and my moon are both in Aquarius. So, uh, when Venus and the moon are in Aquarius, that's me projecting down here. My moon aspect and my Venus aspect. Where are yours? Uh, my sun, Saturn and Mars are all right here in Capricorn. So when the sun, Saturn and Mars are here, that's me projecting down here. Think about what I just said. That's you projecting down here. And you project through the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon. We don't, we can't blame this on anybody but us. We are the actors on the stage. Are you just going to play the part? Because there has been a rewrite, by the way. The scribes have been busy. They always have. They decided they didn't like the script. So they rewrit it to keep themselves in power. And they wrote it in an alchemical language that you will never be taught. It is an oral tradition. You must learn it. You must live it. And this is the best way you can know it. This is the simplest way to know it. Is to learn alchemy and to learn astrology. Which is what Aquarius is all about. So you'll be ahead of the game coming into the, the new world. The pneumatic world. The PNU, the Greek word of pneumatic, air power, fixed air. We're coming into a stable age. <clears throat> the, this age, you know, when we talk about the stone the builders rejected, the builders have to do with Taurus. That's the age of the builders. It's where the Masons come from. But they were rebuilding a world. Uh, the world was destroyed in Cancer, the destroyer. And Mercury was the great navigator and remapped the world and redone his zodiac. This is Mercury's zodiac. He was the navigator that he had for the coming ages. This is what the pieces of the body of Osiris that were put back together. It, this amalgamation that we have. This came in this age. It was given to us by the Greeks and the people from India. That's its source right here. This is where that information comes from. This age, the, this timeline, when Gemini 
rose in the spring equinox. And then the builders of what we call Egypt are what I call after the flood. They did not build Egypt. Egypt existed before the flood. And it was represented by the Sphinx, which is the lion and the man. And his name is Thalem, right up here at the top. That is his Arabic name. Aramaic actually now today in the new new like well not new Arabic but uh, they drop the H so it's just Talem they don't have the H just the T but the H is considered a vowel uh, Abram's name his name here was Ibram Ibrahim they added the H Abraham God changed his name and added an H because H uh, works like a vowel in the mouth. Uh, using the linguistics is my thing. So when you say A-E-I-O-U, your lips never touch. It doesn't when you say ha either. So it works like a vowel. That's why it was added later. But the consonants are the constellations. And they're set. And then you have the vowels, which are the planets, and their variable, which is A-E-I-O-U, the hidden ha, and uh, in English, sometimes why, which why don't work, because you move your lips in. No, why don't work. So, but it's just there as part of Daniel Webster Webmaster's manipulation of the English language. I before E, but not after C. Is that right? I forget all of those. So, that's what all's going on. Uh, we're just sitting back watching the show. Uh, like I said, Mars is in that feminine, unstable, water, group think, unstable, group think. And then when Mars moves over here, whoa. With Uranus and cancel culture and fire, it very warlike. Very, very warlike. And it won't cool off till he moves into cancer. A cool down, but that that's where he's debilitated. And he's shut down. He'll be shut down here. Can get fired back up here. We'll become more stable in fixed earth. Do you see how the element affects the planet? The, the cross affects the planet. It's immature. It's in an adept thinking stage in group think, very immature, unstable, childlike, on the effeminate side. You can know everything. You just gotta learn this circle. It's, you know, you, a person can only teach so much. That's why I encourage you to do your homework. And because your journey is, you, you can learn more on your own journey than you could ever learn from me. Doing your own work, sitting down and thinking about it, going through it, looking at it, what it all means, putting, you have all the pieces of the puzzle here, put it together. And there's so much satisfaction in doing it for yourself. That, ah, I did it. I did it for me. And you know, especially everybody that's still stuck at home, uh, what, what better do you have to do? It's, it's your life. It's about your life, your natal chart. I think it should be taught in school. I think they should take kindergarten, should be taught in every year. Give us back those cubes and squares and our circles. Teach us those young pliable minds. And then they immediately shut them down when you began the programming. 
and the grammar, the programmer. Language is the program. It's the script. But you know what? The universe, your subconscious mind, Pluto, and part of your dream state, Neptune, it don't speak language. It don't care what tribe or tongue you're from. It don't care if you're masculine, feminine, what color you are, how old you are, what you believe or what you think. All it knows is the symbols. It's like a freaking computer program. All it knows is the symbol. Your computer don't give a damn about you. It just runs the program. Did you get that? I don't want to drag this too long out. What else did I want to say? I have no idea what I said before, so I really don't know what I want to say because I don't know what I've already said. Uh, so I'll go over. I guess I told you I'm not doing Patreon. I'm, I don't even know how to shut all that down. I've gone so far into it now. Um, but I'm going to do my own website. That just seems like the logical thing to do here. Um, oh, something I do want to do because somebody asked me about it. And I run across it so often doing charts that a lot of you do not know what time you were born. What do I do? You're just all in a panic. Well... To start with, if you don't know what time you were born, there is going to be missing information. But we can eliminate some of that. and We can learn. Uh, you will never know your rising sign. You just won't. Which you won't know your midheaven or any of that because you don't know what time you were born. But you can get a general idea. And you do it by the moon. You can get a general idea of your moon sign. So when you're doing a, your chart, moon over here, and this is a good spot for it too. What we do is we put the moon at 12 o'clock. Put the moon at 12 o'clock. That's straight up high noon. So you can look forward 12 hours, or you can look backwards 12 hours and you can at least know what constellation it's in if it's in the middle it's generally going to be there it takes two days for the moon to move through a constellation but if it's on um, the crossover point where they meet then like this one we kick it up 12 hours it's in leo right now leo gonna watch it and it's the next day before it goes into Virgo. So that person born the day before, oh no, five o'clock in the, no, I'm right. It's the next day, 27th. So it's going to be in Leo. But it, it could go either way, 12 hours, right? If you're caught in the middle, that's how you know. And, uh, you, but you'll never know exactly where your moon is, what deacon you're in, unless you do some really deep homework and you're honest with yourself about your personality, remembering the fact that your natal chart really talks about you uh, as you were when you were a child. The first 30 years, but predominantly the first 15 years, uh, that by then... You come through puberty, you're pretty much, your identity is where it's going to be. So, you're looking at you as a child. Uh, you have to look at the moon again on your uh, first and second Saturn returns. And you'll have to do the same thing, depending on where it lands. Unless you know the time. Did that make sense to anybody? Do y'all get that? I hope that's understandable because I'm dealing with several right now that have this issue and it's hard to work through. Um, you want to give the right information. Now, when I do people's charts, I don't want to know anything about you. I don't want to know nothing. I want the chart to speak for itself. 
And I recently done one that uh, was a redo. It was a, I had to redo this chart. So um, I already knew about this person by then. I've already done their chart once. And um, I got to know them after I'd done the chart. So now it's a redo chart because I know a lot more information. And it's been a few years and they just want to update chart. So I catch myself because they didn't have a birth time. And I catch myself that I wanted to put it in one sign because of what was I knew about the person. But the, the other aspects of the other planets told me that it was in the other sign based on the other planets. Well, you wouldn't normally, people wouldn't look at you like the moon is how other people see you. So people wouldn't see you as this. You, you tell me this, so I want to do this. But the chart is saying it's this one based on where the other planets are. That it's very unlikely that it would have been in the other side. You can see their personality. Now, yes, yeah, some are going to be born those few hours later and it's in the other side. Yes, that's going to happen. But they're also going to be born in a different location. Which adjust this. And, you know, here's... I kind of get the 23.5 degrees, but you would think it would be more of 33 degrees because when you live below the equator, I do charts from all over the world, so when you live below the equator, the stars, you have a different view of the heavens than you do above the equator. Different stars constellations come into view at different times of the years or different parts of constellations there are stars in the southern hemisphere that we in the northern hemisphere will never see unless we go down there and vice versa right so the stories uh, the legends and the zodiacs from the different places around the world in history show this that's why you got to go through and do everybody's zodiac, which is what star lore is here. Stellarium has given you everything. You can look at it in all the different known, and it updates all the time. And it's networked to all the telescopes, the observatories around the world. And most of the legends are here. Now, uh, you will notice compared to some of my older videos when I was using Stellarium, that it too has been scrubbed, just like all websites. There's particular information that they thought was they needed to remove, and they did it. And a lot of the names or the stars are no longer there, or the translations of the names are not there. But I have most of them in the older videos I've done. Uh, just because that's what I liked, it's what I was doing, It's so you'll find most of that on Inside 33. I am also aware that without the link, you cannot go to Inside 33 and find my videos. They are unlisted. I do not know why, but you, if you have the link, you can go to it. You will find the link. Let me just take you there on my channel page right here inside 33 archive 11 levet 11 this link will get you into that playlist and i think it's the only one that will or at least i can go there i don't some of you are telling me you can't find it well here it is right here and i usually put it in the description box below the videos sometimes and but um I also have the Celestial Voyages channel, which I only use as a backup when this one is being threatened to be shut down. Uh, when I open my website, I hope to continue to upload to YouTube, but uh, everything exclusive will be on the website. Uh, otherwise, after they're up there a week or so, I might upload them onto YouTube. Unless I think it's the YouTube family needs a update. 
uh, of what's going on because there's so much going on. Let's see if we can get Stellarium back up. Are we still rolling? It's hard to tell. With yes, we're still rolling. This screencast, it they keep updating it and it's changing and it's aggravating me. Of course, Mercury retrograde is to be expected. And let let me pull us to now. We could be looking at today, which is. Um, June 26, 2020 at 3.44 Central Standard Time. And our favorite guy, our teacher, our master, our guiding light. Uh, the stone the builders rejected. I was talking about that. After they done the Gemini, make the new Zodiac, and the builders began digging Egypt out here and uh, they reestablished the mystery schools and built the zodiac along the Nile River the micro of the macro as above so below um, they could not find the phallic of Osiris so they made one and it is serious the star or the stone the builders accepted you know everybody talks about i begin a lot of questions about the asteroid the asteroid the stone that falls from heaven uh, here's your stone that not falls comes comes from air the star that comes from air that crushes the feet the ten toes the ten toes the ten ages the that are mixed with iron, Aries, and clay, which is Virgo. Because Peter's upside down. Yeah. It's all here. From everywhere around the world, too. And it's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, they used to have a lot more of the images up here, and they purged it. So now we have to do that. But there's a lot of information here to be learned. Look at all this information on the Chinese, the high judge. And you got to take into context, uh, this knowledge is fire knowledge, uh, a Chinese zodiac their color is yellow so that's fire so you're gonna learn about fire from them you're gonna learn of the three the three powers of fire right that's where you go to learn fire and it's funny that we get celeste uh, celestial clock Saturn is the celestial cock not clock cock he's the rooster that crows uh, and, of course, Jupiter, the establishment. And I've told you the establishment worships Jupiter, which is empire. Here it's just establishment, which is should be a stable mind. Ish is Adam, the stable Adam mind. And that's not what it is at all. Uh, the Twelve States... You can learn so much by going through all of this information. And sometimes you got to click back and forth because to see what's what. It's going to take you some time. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. I've been doing this for all my, uh, I began with the languages, been doing it for 50 years. Didn't get into this part until the last decade when I started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and realized what I was looking at and when you when you when you look at it it looks at you when you see it it sees you and it'll begin communicating with you through nature because this is all natural 
This is O natural. This is, uh, it's masculine, feminine, it's everything. It's all in all. And just like <clears throat> Orion is set up, the three pillars, uh, as above, so below, a micro of the macro, uh, this is the universe. It's one verse, but it's it was supposed to be let there be. But it has been hijacked twice, by the way, in just one turn. We haven't even made it one way around the circle yet. That's all the story we have. We have, The only story we have is just one time around the circle. That's it. Everything else is crumbled into dust or washed away or destroyed. And we have to pick up the further we go back the less and less information we have. So, to know this can fill in so many gaps. To know this perfectly explains that we do not evolve. We mutate. We transmutate from one age to the next. And it's all done by frequencies that come through the sun because he he's in the he's always in the east. We just what the 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 way it's set up in astrology, the earth spins, the sun always sets in the east. I mean it rises in the east. The earth spins, it sets in the west. This it shows you it's a like a mouse cursor that points to stars. Well, right now, even though he's going around the circle, he's still the, the seed of power, so celestially, uh, that's why it remains at 322, or actually it's 321. March 21st is the solstice. And even though these heavens turn, the solstice remains. It is a celestial galactic cross that supersedes them all. And it has four points, the two equinox and the two solstice. Those are its four points. And everything, those are the seats of power. It's where the sun rises in the morning. What constellation it rises in determines the frequency of the sun. And our DNA changes and plant life changes. And we go through the seasons of our life. Spring, winter, summer, and fall. And we, but we've only, we can only, I'm sure we've been around it many times. Uh, but the storyline that we have starts in Aquarius. And it ends in Aquarius. In the beginning, God created the heavens, Aquarius, and the earth, Capricorn. And it was good. Let there be light. And so on and so forth. I am the first Aquarius. I am the last. Thirteenth Aquarius. Either Aquarius is the thirteenth constellation. Or the earth is. The sun itself is the star of the thirteenth constellation. Which, depending on the legend. Both are right. But to know this is to know thyself. It's part of it. It's part of it. Um, you sit at the foot of the master. That puts you here. This is the symbol of Babylon and confusion. But it, uh, in Christianity, it represents John the Apostle. Uh, he was the only one that showed up of the apostles that showed up at the crucifixion. He's at the crucifixion. His mother, the Divine Feminine, Mother Mary, and the other Mary. That's why we're under Maritime Law. Jupiter and Mercury rule this age. They, they're the only ones that rule the mutable cross, and neither one of them have a part in the next two ages. They have no part. And we're supposed to get a 
New Jerusalem or a new zodiac. And I hope it'll be an all-inclusive one without all the holes in it, all the missing pieces. We should get to know the true names of all the stars and their attributes. And it will be taught to us. It, school will be, your schooling and your education will be based on astrology. It will be, ba your education will be specifically designed towards your natal chart and your Saturn returns. So that you can be the best you can be. You can be the you you were born to be. No more hijacked age. No more illusions. No more lies. No more group think. You have to be a sovereign individual here. You can't depend on others. It's going to be based on merit. You must earn it. You can't be born into it. There'll be no inherited wealth. You must earn it. But everybody will get an equal footing. It will not matter your race, your color, your age, your beliefs, or nothing. What are your skills? What are you, what are you good at? You know, a lot of people, you like psychopaths that grow up, are you born that way? Well, you know, if, if you knew that was in a child's chart, that that possibility could happen, you could cut it off at the pass. And you would know what to do for the child to prevent that future. Even for yourself. Uh, like somebody born with Mars on the feminine axis of the mutable cross can be very unstable emotionally, bipolar. If it's retrograde, they can have severe depression and be uh, suicidal. Well, isn't it great to know that? Because just knowing will help you get through it. If we just knew why things were happening to us, it makes it more tolerable, more bearable. But when we're put here and we don't know what our purposes are, and we feel like we're unwanted, unloved, unneeded, unappreciated, it's all an unworld. When you're born into that, you know, suicide seems like a great way out. I mean, who wants that? Nobody. But you know what? Everybody's got a purpose. And no purpose is greater than another. Be and that's really what Capricorn and Aquarius is about. Uh, Aquarius is about the one who gives himself for the whosoever. And Capricorn is about your purpose and what you can give back to society. You fulfill your purpose. Cardinal Earth. Don't get any better. This is the apex. This is the best that we can be right here. And it's all controlled by our higher selves. Saturn. Not our desires and our, our religion and our ideology. Jupiter. All that. All this. All this is going on right now. Done. It's, it's in its death throes. That's why it's screaming for its own life. Because it knows, at least for 20 years, Jupiter, Saturn, has that seat of power. Now, the sun is still over here in Pisces. So, Jupiter ain't out of the game. I call it the deadly head wound. That's what I call it. Because I've not seen Jupiter take a hit like this in 2,000 years. Put it to you that way. In Kabbalistic tradition, Saturn just came into a 36-year rule. In Western tradition, he's coming into a uh, 20 year rule. So, and those are going to overlap. So, he's taking more and more power. Well, that's the higher self. Not it, desire, emotion, greed, and lust. The four bad aspects of those planets. Because that's all that Jupiter and Mer Mercury is doing right now. Is they're playing on the bad aspect specs. They're pulling your heart strings. You're, they're prodding you emotionally. And they do a lot of it. Pluto, with Pluto and Jupiter. Jupiter's using your subconscious against you. He's perverting the symbolism. You wear the logos, that means you're telling the universe that's what you want. That's what you align yourself with. 
You're contracting in an agreement when you carry those symbols. Symbols are so important. That's why the God of fire forbade any symbols of anything in heaven or in earth. Only fire and water were allowed. That star of David. Fire over water. Only that was allowed because Mars and Jupiter rule water and fire along with the sun and the moon. Mars and Jupiter to where Jupiter and Mercury alone rule the mutable cross. But they contracted in Mars. Mercury and Jupiter and Mars had to get his cut. Needed a piece of the pie. Your Babylonian priesthood. All right. That's what's going on. I've been talking about it for a long time. It's finally happening right before our eyes. And I, I have to admit, I knew it was going to be a crazy year, but I could have never imagined what's going on. It's insanity. It's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It don't even make sense until you get to looking at it here. Uh, but one of the big things they like to play is order out of chaos, right? Yep, except this time, the he doesn't get the order. Saturn does. Saturn gets to be the order out of chaos this time, not Jupiter. He's trying. He's not giving up. He's Right now, he's running. He's They're both retrograde. So it appears as Saturn is chasing Jupiter back into his own house. So he's... Uh, but Jupiter is definitely going to use Pluto to manipulate ideology. Your what you believe connected to that fire of the conscious mind and cancel culture back to ideology and cancel culture and fire and fire it's just it's crazy I know but it's all there can you see it with me uh, your eyes can tell you more than your ears ever can if you just learn to listen with them all right I think I'm gonna wrap this up uh, I'll get out another video as soon as I can. I appreciate those who donate to this channel. And if you feel so inclined, you'll find the information you need in the description box below. And everybody have a great day. Go out and be the best you can be. Always commit that random act of kindness. And uh, bank that karma. We need it this year.